as you can see, it has been snowing. I'm still in Balata and last night, maybe four inches of snow, I think, fell. Not so much in here because it's wooded, but yeah, about four inches of snow fell, which is fairly substantial. And I was planning on cutting up this hill anyway, actually. Uh, but having, doing it in the snow is just an extra bonus, really. Today I'm heading up Craig and Darroch, just above Balata. Again, it's not a, a big hill. It's certainly smaller than the one yesterday, which I also regarded as being fairly small. This one's, I think it's just a little over 400 metres. Balata itself is at just over 200 metres. So it's a fairly hefty climb and it is quite steep. There's various ways you can go up. Um, I mean, it's a hill that's all by itself, so it's like a cone, uh, like a dome, you know? Uh, and there's a path that goes all the way around. It's like a circular path that goes all the way around the outside, and which is what I'm on now. And there's various routes off that. Currently, I'm on the sort of the western northern edge of the circular path. So I'm, I'm teetering above the Pass of Balata, which is this down here. You can see these crags through the forest here. It's a deep glacial cleft cut by glaciers. Uh, really steep on both sides, so it's quite a, a fairly steep drop here. All this blabery everywhere. Uh, and equally steep on the other side with those crags. And for this little outing, I'm just going to carry on around the circular path and then head up from the other side to where we are now. There's a wonderful view from the top, but with the showers coming in like they are, who knows whether we'll get a view. You can hear from the wind roaring, but I'm guessing, above all this, just uh, what a savage day it is out there still. I did, after when I woke up this morning, you know when that you wake up and there's just that brightness outside through the curtains, you just know snow's fallen. You get the same thing when you have, when in Fife, when we wake up and we're, because we're quite high up, and you wake up and you're above the clouds and everything's glaringly bright and white. It comes through the blinds even though you can't see it. And the same way with snow, you just know it's snowed. And when I saw that this morning, I wanted, I was half tempted to try and go and get a repeat of what I had yesterday and actually just get higher up with the snowshoes and stay in the, you know, in the, in the forest. But I won't lie, I'm tired after yesterday's exertions. Uh, so I'm quite happy having a, a much more gentle day. Oh, no, it's frozen. If I could get that out, it would... Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> I do like these things, these information panels. Uh, yeah, the mighty wood ant. Inside the little hill in front of you is a whole complex colony of ants, along with the queen ant and some winged male ants. There are thousands of workers who travel from the nest each day to collect food for the colony. They are amazingly strong and can carry food more than six times as heavy as themselves. That is the same as you carrying a car on your back. I came here in September last year, when obviously there was no snow, sadly. Uh, and it's in here, something. It's, it's that lump. And it was, it was teeming with wood ants, you know, quite big things. It will give you a nip of, uh, I do remember sort of leaning up against a pine tree, trying to climb one of those sort of old granny pines in Abernethy Forest, actually, and leaning up against a tree, and then feeling a sort of an owl, and then look, bringing my finger up and actually being a, an ant attached <laughs> on the end. They can't get through, but, um, They'll, go, they'll give it a good go. A potent nip. But anyway, these colonies are incredible, sort of, and a, and a sign of a very old ancient woodlands where you get wood ants, massive colonies. I don't know what they do in winter. I'm assuming they just hunker down. I don't know. I don't actually know what they do in winter. Anyway, there are that many paths coming off this one, and. and I could remember which one to take if it was in summer, but now they're all a bit obscured by snow. I'm not so sure. You could probably take any of them, actually. There's loads of informal ones heading up. All right, just squeeze through this rock face. It's 
just lovely, it's so quiet. Now that I'm on the, the leeward side, you know, the, the maelstrom, the wind is all the way up there on the other side. Now it's gone very, very quiet. Just with this snow falling. It's so beautiful. Already, just, you know, the last three walks I've had, you know, the one yesterday, this one today, and the one in Loch Brandy the other day, that's almost more snowy walks than I got the whole of last winter. <laughs> just in the last week. So again, I'm hoping that, that November's not a false dawn, as it often proves to be. You always get, you know, front-loaded winters like it happened last year. You got it all in November, and then nothing happens for the rest of the year. So that's a worry. So, you know, because we get it early, you do, you do worry. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be a cooler one this year and that this is going to be the way it's going to carry on. If anything, it's a bit warm <laughs> now. Yeah, I mean, all these trees down here got so much more snow on them compared to around the other side where we were not that long ago. Oh, it's wonderful. This happens all too infrequently. Not so much here. I mean, this is Ballister, so it snows. You know, they're used to getting snow, but certainly nothing like this in Fife these days. It's just so much calmer here. All the trees are holding their snow. Oh, no, I'm completely the wrong way. <laughs> this way. This way. Well, nice views out up that way. Up, I think it's Glengairn up that way, going that way. Uh, Actually, no, it's not, is it? We're on the other side now. So, yeah, so that's, that's the, the eastern end of Ballater, and then that way goes to our boin. That's the D over there, sort of. Just see it over there. Where are we? There you are. That's the D hiding in the distance over there. Got another piece of interpretation. See what it says? The pudding hill of D side. Craig and Derek's shape is distinctive, but how was it formed? During the last ice age, great glaciers filled D side and covered Craig and Derek. They scraped away at Craig and Derek's tough granite stone, smoothing its sides and rounding its top. Look at the cliff in front of you. Have you noticed how smooth it is? The ice must have been very deep to reach up this high. And there you go, there's a handy little picture. <laughs> Telling you what happened. But that's actually quite handy because I'm not going to be able to show you the profile of the hill from where I am, of course, but that gives you a sense of what it's like. Oh, and the path sort of goes all the way around the end and there's lots of paths going up to the top. So it is, it's like a upside down pudding. Right. The word, the name, Craig and Darragh, uh, it's like most names are, most place names anyway, it's a descriptive term, a mix of a couple of words, Crag, Craig and Darragh. Darragh's a word you'll find all over Scotland, um, in various different ways, you know, certainly as a suffix it features quite heavily because it, it means oak, so it's Rocky Hill of the Oak. Um, and there's not so much... Uh, actually, yeah, this is all, a lot of this is oak, that's birch, but some of these big old oak trees here, but certainly on the, the western side, um, there's a lot more oak. And we'll get around and see that a bit later. In the meantime, there's a sign up there saying to top and round. So this is us going up, and interestingly, nobody has been up here yet. So that's nice, it's always nice to walk through virgin snow. Like I say, it is, it is quite a steep climb that goes on for quite a long time, actually. Uh, I think I said earlier, isn't it, Bra Brahma, Ballater's at a little over 200 metres, and this is over 400 metres. So there's a, a fair bit of a climb. It's interesting, I was curious, looking up the heights of how high these towns are, just this morning, so I could tell you how high up Ballater was. And I was interested in how high up Braemar was as well, because certainly when you drive in, when we drove in the other day, it was very snowy in Braemar and not so snowy here. And I thought maybe it was just a case of distance, you know, it's 10, 12 miles different further east here. But Braemar is actually 
apparently, well over 300 meters in altitude. So it's a good 100 meters higher, if not more, than here, which explains why it's often a lot snowier just a little way down the road west in Braemar. Well, there's blue sky. Lots of blue sky. That would be perfection if I could time it like that. But when does it ever get that lucky? Actually, I'm being a bit disingenuous saying that because very frequently, as anyone who follows these blogs will know, I do get lucky, as we all do from time to time. I'd say I got lucky yesterday as well when uh, pulling up into those trees just at the right time when the sun came out. <laughs> I was about to dare to race against time now because looking out that way it's just murky as anything. We should be the next snow coming through. Ooh. Well, I'm not going to get the sun, I don't think. I think they are going to time it for the gloom that's coming in from behind me. But this is, this is just magical. Snow, heavy on all this birch, really sticking to it. Isn't that amazing? Well, <laughs> run out of time. Oh, they'll probably clear through. But while there's me saying, when do you ever get as lucky to get the sun when you get to the top of a summit on a snowy day? This is luck too. I mean, to walk around a forest like this, a woodland in snow, and a lot of it too. <laughs> That's just as good. It's just lovely how the sound gets so muted. I've not seen any squirrels, no sign of wildlife. I've seen a set of prints, no birds. So from a nature perspective, you might think winter's not a great thing to love really because it's a hard time for wildlife in these conditions. I love it. It's so quiet. I mean, I can hear the wind roaring over there, but everything's going in that monochrome. How you just get you just get black and white. Oh, it's just so so beautiful. I know I keep saying it, but how can you not love this? I get I do get people asking me a lot. Why do you love winter? Uh, because summer is this thing that I suffer. And it's for days like this, it's just so beautiful. The way it changes over and all sort of trace of humanity is just wiped off the landscape. Paths, footprints, litter, it all just disappears. You know, for, and for a while you can sort of pretend that you're miles from anywhere, backpacking through a wilderness. It's an illusion, of course, but it's one that I'm happy to pull the veil down and, and believe in it. It's a little bit cold for a sit down today. I'll go to the proper viewpoint which is just down here looks like only one person's been up here this morning it's a really rocky summit and uh, the snow's not deep enough to have really concealed and covered up the boulders so it's um it's a bit slippy underfoot not knowing where the boulders are <laughs> carefully does it <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Oh, oh. 
a view of Balata down here. Do you know, in conditions like this, with um, this much snow, and the way that a lot of the sort of the towns laid out on this grid, or at least it has that appearance around the river. It has that. It, it feels like it's a town in the Rockies. It does feel like that. It feels like a sort of a Canadian town in BC or Alberta or something like that. Well, so not the sunshine, although there is blue sky coming. It's a nice little place, Ballatra. I mean, Deeside in general. Uh, it's my second time here. Because it's, it's that much further on the other side of the Cairngorms to get there from the central belt. It's, it's quite a long way to come sort of over Glenshee and come all the way out here to go walking. So you do need to come here for you know, a few days to make the most of it, getting out this way and even further out towards Aboyne. Uh, but it's a nice little place. Like I said, I came here last year in September for the first time and stayed a few days and came up here so taken with this hill that as soon as I came up here, I went up here again. So I came up, went around the circle and then came up again. Really, really beautiful place. Um, nice little hill, proper little rocky hill with a nice summit, good views and lots of pine, Scots pine to admire. Ballater was, um, I mean there's been a settlement and there's been settlements along the D for a long time in, in D side but it was, I think it really had its heyday, or its, well not its heyday but it sort of came into its modern being as a tourist place in the 18th century I believe when there was uh, it was a spa town and then sort of off the back of Victoriana and all that and there was a railway here until fairly not that long ago a few decades ago with all the cuts in the 60s so there used to be a railway here as well so it was it's been that sort of holiday place a way of getting into the hills um, nice place but it did have a it had a torrid time a few years back in December 2015 when we had that horrendous winter uh, a lot of them have been horrendous, but the really, really wet one where we had the UK had the wettest December on record since 1910, uh, and the, you know the mildest as well. And so that meant lots of rain, lots of storms. You know when we had that succession of storms that came in, and I think that was the first year they'd been named. And there was there was a few, but then there was that storm Frank, which deluged this part of the world. And because none of the because it was so mild, none of the water, none of the precipitation was was locked up as snow on the hills and so everything was coming off you know usually you can get like now you know it's a big dump of snow a lot of precipitation has fallen but it's locked up and it only sort of will melt gradually as it gets gradually milder in it and it gives a chance the rivers a chance to sort of carry all that water out to the, to the sea but that didn't happen in that winter because it was so mild and poor Ballater was just decimated in no small measure uh, I mean the D you wouldn't think it to see it now little thin black line in the distance but it swamped much of the town and there was that very famous footage you know of uh, static caravans being swept down the D and hitting the bridge um, and I was here a few months after actually and there was still I mean the bags of rubbish everywhere and debris and you know the golf course and the caravan park were obliterated uh, so it take these places take a while to recover but Ballata being a very beautiful place very place good with tourism very popular it will bounce back and it is bouncing back but you know it's all the more reason when these places do suffer inundations like that it's all the more reason to actually get to, up to them for more than a day and actually spend your tourist money and help these places recover well there is blue sky over there but at the moment it's not looking hopeful, <laughs> but that's fine. It's like I say, because it's because it's not very big. If I get down and suddenly there's a a blue sky moment, it's so easy, you know, in 25 minutes, 20 minutes, you can be back up again at the top. So I might do that. I might head down and then see what the weather's doing when I get down there, rather than hanging around up here on the off chance it might clear. Oh, it's just wonderful. I mean, it's chucking it down now. I mean, if this had been yesterday in, uh, on the open hillside with the spin drift and everything, it would be horrendous and you're verging on feeling, you know, you're completely out of control of the situation. But when you're in a sheltered forest, I mean, it's still blowing around a lot. Oh, God, there's nowhere I'd rather be. It's getting tricky to follow the paths. 
I'm not 100% sure where they go. Not that it doesn't really matter because the circular path, it's circular, so whichever way down you go, you're always going to find it. Assuming you've met, assuming that's not obliterated as well. But it is quite rocky and slabby, so I am being careful on my descent. Lots of trees to hold, thankfully. All that. I had to have a really bizarre gate yesterday when I was um, going through, after I stopped filming up on the hill, the Savage Hill, because it had been very wet and the snow had fallen when it was very wet and then it had frozen. Lower down the hill, it was a lot of snow, but it had a very thick icy crust on top. So going through, walking through that was horrendous. I had to sort of walk funny, lifting my legs up and I've got an ache in my thighs today. So it's just a bit of a, a trauma. Is this the way I want to go? The path split just then. I'm not sure which one I'll do. I think I'll take the other one. Well, it's nice to get some sunshine. I think it's fleeting. And I had half a mind just then to sort of dash back up to the top, but I can see already there's grey clouds massing, so it's not going to last long. But isn't this beautiful? This is... This is the oak woods. This is Craig and Derek oak woods. This is why the site the whole hill pretty much is designated as a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest because of its oak woodlands. And, you know, one of the previous blogs at Ariundel, the same sort of thing, you know, an oak woodland, but this is, this is dominated by a different species. This is dominated by pedunculate oak, which is the sort of the English oak type, whereas Ariundel was mostly sessile. These ones have, for the most part, been planted and it's a similar story in that it's really here and in such good condition as an ancient woodland because it was used for industry. It was coppiced stuff here. All these were planted and they were coppiced until quite, you know, quite fairly recently actually until I'm not quite sure how long it was cut down. Maybe in the 20th century they stopped. Anyway, it was used for tan bark. So using the bark for tanning products. Uh, not tanning salons, not that sort of tanning. Um, and also for, I think the spokes of wheels. And it would have been coppiced on a 20, 25 year rotation. Uh, you know, cut that often and then you get sort of a younger, younger shoots and younger branches coming through and then you leave it for 20 something years and then by the time you come back, you've got another supply of wood and you move around and you sort of, you're in, a, in a sustainable way, move around the woodland. So that's where this all comes from. For the most part, industry. So it's just like Ariandel where we were not so long ago. Just a couple, just last month in fact. Another oak woodland, different species of oak, but the same, essentially the same reason here because of industry. Although it's suffering from the same problems. I mean, you've seen there's lots of Scots pine here, lots of birch further up, but uh, the, no regeneration, no natural regeneration of oak. And the same reason, the same problem at Ariandel is because the canopy is too dense, too dark, and d oak likes light, it wants light. And there's probably quite a bit of browsing by deer as well. So there's the two similar problems deer browsing and there being quite a, a thick canopy so if this is to recover and still be an oak woodland in however many decades to come it will probably need some active management to enable saplings to grow and I dare say they'd need tree guards on them to stop the deer from browsing them because that's a problem all over Scotland oh.
Already the snow started again. Sun's going, snow's falling. This is, I think, the last day that there's supposed to be significant snowfall. And then tomorrow it's gonna dry off and then come the weekend it's gonna be milder up to about seven or eight degrees. It's hovering just above freezing today. So this is, sadly, the extent of this current cold spell. So <laughs> it's just the most, the best choice we could have done for coming here on holiday to Balatur for a few days at this, this week above all, you know, of all weeks to have come here this week and get, you know, these wonderful conditions. Right, 